Hey, everybody, this is Frankie from Frankie Day Models. Okay, uh, for this beautiful, gorgeous uh, Monday afternoon. Partly cloudy and rainy here and there, off and on. Halfway a video number two on my uh, Infinity 132nd scale SP2C4 Hell Diver. The base, the big tail beast. The SOB second class. Okay. <sighs> I have done a lot of free uh, dry fitting. If it's so, if it's good, everything does. The fuselage just goes together very well, even with the interior parts all the way assembled, installed inside the fuselage temporarily. It closes up very nicely. I think the key is, guys, it's always good to take a nice. Sanding stick or not or or a, or a filing board like I have here, and always sand the outsides of these edges real good, because I think the molds were more or less used for resin. When they produced the resin kit, they went ahead and put the polyurethane into it, or stuff polystyrene where they use in here. Anyway, make a long story short. When you clean these parts, make sure they're good and clean. And give them a good light sanding, all all edges. It'll fit real good inside, and that right there will cause it because you're probably moving a, a, a thousandths a thousandths of an inch of uh, excess plastic, which you know, by sanding it, make sure it's good and clean. That way, you know, when it fits inside your fuse shot, you close it up, it's not gonna push it out. You gotta go uh, 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 give all you got just to glue it together and it springs apart, and you end up putting styrene in it. And pretty soon, you get it gets good. You get to a situation that you get so confused, you want to shell the model. Don't do that. Always dry fit your parts first. What is damn Popeye bike now? As I've done on this, I installed the, the, the uh, spar. I already primed that spar. i got to take that into your grain before I uh, get the wings on there. Now, the interior on both sides of the fuselage shells have been painted already and I gave it a wash inside. So one of those electronic boxes got decals that got the uh, applied on there. So that's the next step on this here hell diver I gotta do before I button up the fuselage. That's on the right side shell. This is a port side shell, left side shell. It's treated in the same manner. Make sure, like I'm saying, this has no locating pins, as you can see. All I take is a file board and I always sand the outside joint edge when it goes together. Make sure it's good and clean, because like I say, you're moving a thousandths, at least a thousandths of an inch of excess plastic you don't need just by cleaning it. And it'll cause it to, to, to uh, uh, go together quite well without too much. Uh, Bust to be able to, uh, to get a good sanding. I haven't got to that stage yet. Once I join the fuselage together, uh, the next video will be when it's all buttoned up together and I'll have still shots of this and all these parts in there before I button up the fuselage on the next video. That'd be number, number three video. So, anyway, like I'm saying, guys, you got to prepare these parts before you glue them together. As I, say, I say a thousand words make one word. Mm. Yeah, I got all this assembly done. This is the instrument panel right here. I got all the decals and all my seat belts here. These are the next steps I'm using. I put the decals on the control box, on the uh, electrical box inside both sides of the fuse lodges. And also, I got the decals for the it'll fit inside here where the uh, instrument panel is at. The instrument panel will be glued on the uh, pilot's floor. That'll be the next step. And also, uh, the assembly of the seat belts will be all shaped before I button up the fuselage. Because it's better to put the seat belts on now at this stage than it is when the fuselage is all buttoned up. That way, you have a grip on things. Makes sense, guys. You know, why fight it? It's naked there for you to do it. Take care of it there. Once it's buttoned in, you got no beef. 
This is the aft end of the gunner, observer, radio man operating compartments aft. I place all these parts, dry fitted now, bit glue, inside one shell of the fuselage. And I put the other one there and see if it's any pushing out. It's like a glove. So I haven't seen too many builds of this kid except one build that Bevel was doing. And uh, he was, um, he was really kind of fighting it. And I can see by looking at it, with, you know, you got to have a trained eye, guys, for everything. And by looking at the sound of the, the cylinder right there, you can see a little flash sticking up like that. Like I say, that flash will throw you off. Like I say, when it comes to these bad boys here, don't be bashful. Don't overdo it either. So all the interior parts have been put together. Ready for insulation, with the exception of the completion of the instrument panel, which all the decals there, as you can see, goes there. All these decals right here go to the interior of this uh, here, L diver. Here's your photo which says the seat belts, fittings, and also it's nice for them to do this way. I like this. This don't feel like photo wish. This probably uh, this stuff probably is photo wish. The seat belts here, they look like they've been treated with a canvas. Don't 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 really don't even go there, guys, by painting over it or trying to peel that stuff off. Don't do it. It's done intentionally for as a finished product. So one guy I saw on there was trying to scratch the stuff off. So, oh my God, that's a finished product right there. You don't want to do that. That's done intentionally. It saves you from painting them. That's just the main objectivity. So anyway, I got that going on. Once the seat belts have been installed, all the decals been on the electrical boxes, also the instrument panel has been placed in position where it's supposed to be. Then it's time to butt up the fuselage. So that will be on step three coming up. And step three will probably be coming up probably by tomorrow. Because that will be at that stage tonight. I'll take my here my, my camera over here, my camcorder, and I'll make several uh, shots of it, placing the stills on my on video three. And we'll show you the, uh, the few stars that will button up. And everything else will go together just like that. So there's a lot of aftermarket parts out here, guys. If you don't trust what's in the kit, I trust it because it's designed for it to be in this kit. So once you go beyond that, there's aftermarket companies out there like Big Ed. Uh, a host of others out there, I really don't know. I mean, I really don't know. And to get those, I imagine you have to get a whole Sprue Brothers. I like Sprue Brothers. Uh, Mr. Uh, Freddy Duarte. Uh, our beloved Fred Duarte, my best friend. I love this band very dearly. He's a great man, great guitar, a great model builder and everything. And he's been very good to me. And uh, he suggested to go with Food Brothers. So following his suggestion, I went there. And um, and uh, I was really greedy with anything you want there. So why go to eBay or go anywhere else where everything's there? That's up to date stuff, guys. But this right here, I'm pretty happy with this kid. Uh, so far, I dry fitted it together, checked, rechecked, double checked, and checked again. And it goes together very, very, very well without any fuss. Now, uh, like I say, the key is clean up the whole fuselage, wings, give it a good sanding, and make sure all the flush, all the sprues that was attached to is off the flesh. And also, it's good to trim a little bit more on there. That way, it goes together quick. Easily, it's not gonna fight you because, like I say, guys, we got all that stuff in there. It pushes up against the both sides of the fuselage shells, and you end up fighting it. And they end up putting on that highlight glue and, and sprinkle on some of that quick dry juice. Uh, we call it the uh, accelerator, yeah. Accelerator stuff, you get a spray, and, and that don't do nothing, guys. It's probably your thing has got to be in its natural state, glue and glue. Cryolite's good too. After you put the glue on there, then back it up with the cryolite, then. You're ready to go, but like I say, you got to clean up these edges here. But I was really that's the first disappointment that I know in this kit is there's no locating pins on this thing. But there isn't hardly any ejection pin marks on this thing either. So I could rather I rather have no locating pins than have locating pins with a fistful of 
projector pin marks. All it's called, guys, there's nothing in there to be found. This and it. This here, this side here, is not, is not a, right here, is not a ejector pin mark. It's a screw jack. That's a little dimple right here. Yeah. Because this thing it actually was designed as a resin kit for MPH models. Very costly model. I can see why it's very expensive because it's a multimedia kit. It's got resin, uh, photo etch, styrene, resin, everything to put a model together. A lot of this going on. And I'm glad they made this. This is a short run kit. There ain't very many of these things floating around. So I should highly suggest if you're interested in the big tail based of affinity models, get it now while the getting's good. Maybe really shortly, maybe Trumpeter might make one of these. I'm very surprised they haven't made one now. Very deeply surprised that Trumpeter hasn't made the SV2C Hellbiver. It took 20 years for them to bring out that darn KVD Devastator. And, uh, believe you me, guys, they start producing a lot of these things around. They're, they're going to make some nice models. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this kit. Have done nothing on my fiber, on my, uh, vacuum formula yet. But I've got all the, uh, what are they? See what I'm saying? I took these, all these parts, and traced on styrene. I can cut all these out and add it to my styrene model. It's all there. Okay. An overview of the kit, I can't say. Thus far that I've got on it, what I did to it, I had no fit issues at all. I think 90% of the problem was is just not cleaning out all the parts, make sure the parts are not perfectly clean. Because like I say, guys, they, they, they cause obstruction of fit and everything. This model cost me about 150 bucks. I bought it with Sprue Brothers. And they, within 72 hours, it's, it's, it's at your, your front door, right? Just, just right there. It'll be right there for you, waiting on you. I almost tripped over it, like I did the other one I have. And, uh, but good people, I highly recommend to deal with Spree Brothers. They got some sweet deals and close out, uh, close out deals going on and stuff. I like them. Thank you, Freddie, for, uh, suggesting it to me, sir. And, uh. Yeah. Again, I cannot stress any further than I can't stress now. Anybody that buys a, a model like this for the young ones in the family. I mean, these things are not done, are not made for a, for a child or, or, a, or a young uh, teenager to build. This kid is pretty much virtually designed for a guy who knows what he's doing. An experienced builder. This thing looks like to me, just like a vacuum pump kit in a way. And uh, so the, all, all the fit issues have been overcome because I never ran into any because I cleaned the model. Always looking at things and stuff you gotta focus on. I have done nothing on the SP2, SVC3 yet, but I will. Here's, here's what I'm going to do, guys. By the end of this month, I'm going to have everything done here. I'm going to have the SVC3 done. The B26, I will have a live action that tonight. I promised to have one the other day, but I was so tired, fellas. I was really tired. It gets hot out here in Ohio. We're in a kitchen, we're in a kitchen, a hot galley. That's about 120 degrees in there. That's in the shade and the, and the steam and the heat. 
out of the pizza ovens, off the grill, off the of the fryers, off everything. It, it's uh, it, it's it's hot, 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 hot. And uh, I went to take a shower after me upload that video, so I will stay posted for that for the uh, live action. Tell my girl that shower. I was felt really clean and feel real relaxed. I saw my bunk room back there with my rack all made up. I got me a hammock back there in my back room, back bunk room. I could gimmick with it like like doing a, like doing a, like did in the Navy. And I traced down my hammock right there. I laid a hammock way there and pretty soon I was Good night, Irene. No counting sheep here. I was gone. And I woke up four o'clock the next morning with my clothes on, with with, uh, with my skivvies on, and that was about it. I said, "Man, I've got we got video. The guy's gonna kill me." So here it is. It's Monday, my day off, and we make one tonight. And get that V twenty six. Keep his clothes on her. Want to get the SBC three done? Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some of the stuff way back in storage. Oh yeah, I'll be working on that DVD Devastator too by by Trumpeter. I'll be working on that tonight too. I'll probably have a video of that also going on. So stay tuned for that. It'll be the next video before I post number three on this. So when I get these done here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down what's left here. I'll get another time, put it back in my main warehouse storage facility. Then I'm going to start being on ships, get back on ships again. Maybe get the Titanic going, I need to get the, the Miracle of Spicy going, and I need to get the, uh, I want to get that Yorktown going, that Merrick I Love You kit, my favorite I just bought. That's screaming at me. But the kit of the year for the, for the winter builds is going to be my Portland 196 scale SS Portland, the Portland steamer. And uh, I'll probably be the only one on eBay, eBay help, eBay in my mind, on YouTube, other than the manufacturer that actually built this kit. And uh, I already got this spoke before. This goes in, in uh, with Maritime Lock. Wisconsin. <clears throat> I put that in the museum. I got somebody who wants to buy that off me. And while it's here, I'm going to get a good clean dusting and I'm going to put it together, get it all done, put it in the display case, and sell it to that museum and get some money. And uh, it's pretty shit. I took it out, you know. And of course, you guys see, I made about nine videos of this thing. And believe you me, this is no kit for the novice to build. Too much cutting out windows and stuff. Too much going on here. Okay, too much going on all over the place, especially in here. So that's about the conclusion of the SB2 SB2C4 Hell Diver. I got the uh, all the interiors all painted done, with exception of far. I'll hit that tonight before I go in. So this evening, my goal tonight is get the seat belt, seat the, the, the seat belts all installed inside the pilot seat. Instrument panel all decaled out and get it installed on the floorboard of the pilot's compartment. And also, we get those other uh, decals which simulate controls on the electrical boxes inside the fuse launch. When that's all achieved, I'm going to go ahead and start glue that inside the fuse launch that dry overnight. Then I'll take the camera, make snap, 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 make a few stills here and there. And uh, make a video of that and pretty soon. It slap on the stabilizers, slap on the wings, undercarriage, flaps, dive brakes, cowling engines, and uh, she's ready to go off the deck of an aircraft carrier. Okay, I ain't gonna take much to get this SBC 3 Hell Diver, get her done. I got inner wheel wells that's gotta be filled in, like I showed you before. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and uh, prime this thing all over again. Add the undercarriage. Give it another primer. 
then we'll go ahead and start making the pilot seats there. And also the tail gunner, the radio operator, I have a seat there down there also as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, mask the canopy, canopy down, put the canopy glued in position. I get one last priming and start painting it. I should have this thing done by the end of this month. That's my goal. And I'll have the TVD done by the end of this month. The P26 will be done by probably by the night with live action going on. And by the end of this month, I should have this hell that I will finish. So that's one, two, three, three models done. And uh, is there anything back here too? I need to. Oh, I don't. Nobody else the ships. Yeah, that's about it. Got that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, repack up everything I got laying around. I'll keep my V17 out. I want to get that thing finished. That thing will fit inside the box that came out of. Take the wings off. Fits real nice inside the box. Put the box on. That's the box that comes out. That's the box I can put it back together again too. So I want to finish up the finish this thing up. Make a final video of that and get that out of here. But everything else goes out there into my warehouse, so I keep it there for. So I have some room in here. I save breakage as well. Okay. So I get that all done and cleared out. We're going on model ships. So I'll start my model ship building probably around, sep around September sometime. That's next month. Right now I want to get these things done so I have some room to get some of the stuff going on here. Got so much work to do. Got too much work, especially work on these models. Okay, guys, that's about all I got going for you right now. So some sometime this evening we'll have a live action on the B-26 Marauder. I got all my paint out. I got everything I need. I've got my, uh, where the devil I put that thing? Yeah, aha. Here's my secret. This is Mace Hardware. Everybody I know has an Ace Hardware in the neighborhood. It's metallic aluminum. You take this, make sure it's all shook up, Quite well. Make sure all that pigment is all all that goodness there makes that color real good. It's all shook up so it's fine. Then, number two, here's the kicker. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Acetone. This stuff take a hide off a gnat's back. Anything. This stuff is strong, strong, strong stuff. Get yourself a jar. All of us got a lot of these laying around. Old paint jar. Don't use no touch up color bowl. Like this. I use this a lot because projects are small. Anything smaller than anything larger than what I could need this for. I use this like we all do. I got all kinds of airbrushes here like we all do. I got the Eclipse with the big old bowl on top of it. But I like, I love my Pache Devil Action airbrush. You take this acetone. You fill it about, about a third up full of acetone. You fill it full of acetone. And make sure when you use the stuff, make sure everything that, that's with that acetone is out of the way. Make sure all your, everything's got to be mixed, got to be isolated when you mix it, since you paint. Keep, make sure all your interior parts, everything you've got, the plastic, your instructions is out of the way. Also, before you, all you got nothing but there's a workbench. Like I said, you take this model of size. This, this is a pretty good size model right here. It's a couple ounce model out. If I take about a third of it full of acetone, no more than that, then you take your 
paint here after it's been all mixed up. Make sure all the, all that pigment is mixed up. Then you pop that can out. You take a stick or something. Make sure at the bottom it's all mixed equally. Then you take a stick out. And you let it drizzle inside your your jar until it gets right up to here. But after that, put your can on your jar. Shake it up. Make sure you don't air there because if we don't, it'll, it'll have a film over that paint. It'll be ruined. But you got your acetone and your aluminum paint, you mix together. Paint's all thinned out. And probably a lot of you are wondering, what's with the acetone? What is that supposed to do? Well, is there anybody, has anybody ever oil paint before? With oil paint, to get that point to paint to dry, you need this. That's called turpentine. Made from turps. Turpentine is a drying agent. I use this only in, in these new, developed, humbral color paints they got, especially in the enamel range. This is a drying agent. It dries up oil paints just like that, just like that with umbral paints. This is a drying agent for enamel paint. Once you spray that, that aluminum on there mixed with this, it'll dry just like that. And it'll be nice and bright and brilliant. This this is what they make spraying plate with. Like Bob Archer's Hobby World years ago. He developed a formula called spraying plate. He never revealed using this stuff. This stuff here, with that paint right there, will actually will make a, a plate. I may always mix this with my Aerogloss Dope Aluminum. The stuff you put in those balsam wood airplanes, which don't make no more. People say, man, how do you get that shine like that on there? And I said, it feels like it's like a plate. I say, yeah. I use air, I use air, Aerogloss Aluminum, Savillary Aluminum Dope. It comes in big old jars like that. You take it and put it in a big old jar. You add your acetone on there till, till, till the consistency of of mercury, of thick water. You get to touch the spraying plate. That's the, that little tip I showed you right there is spraying plate. It works. Try it, guys. You'd be surprised how well it does work. And plus, you know, you just have a color jar that puts acetone inside there, run it through your airbrush, cleans everything, it cleans everything out of the airbrush, gets all the, the, the paint built up inside your, 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 your nozzle. Also, inside your orifice and uh, your needle, too. Pick that up. Okay, that's not all I've got to show you right now. So, I got number. I'm trying to prepare to get this held out everybody for number three. Then, I'll, then I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna hop on this B26 and I can get a, get a, get a video of that going on. I want to get that thing painted and get it out of here. And, uh, that'll be that, guys. Take care of mama. Take care of little ones. Stay focused when you drive. Spend wisely. Be aware of your surroundings. Excellent day for a barbecue, but for areas you don't have to worry about raining today. It's been raining off and on all day. It, rained, it stormed last night. The storm here about 45 minutes ago. Now it's all nice and sunny out there. Pretty cookie weather. So anyway, uh, a good day for a good day gives you a good day. And uh, barbecue, get yourself a kit. So. This time, uh, join me this evening. We will have a little live action job going on here, and uh, with my uh, B26 model, get it all done. <sighs> yeah, that's it for me. That's it for Desi Two C. And uh, hope you guys that everybody had a wonderful day today. And enjoy life and uh, thank you again for my subscribers and uh, all the views and all 
candor. And thank you very much, guys. God love you all, and stay posted for live action with me tonight. Okay, let's make a day signing up. We'll catch you guys on the paint job with the V26 brother. Stay posted for that, guys.